Section 5. Vision makes us strangers. Verse 11.3. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them far off and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. These promises and the vision contained in them made this place not home for those who believed. Their vision made them strangers. Sanctification, separation unto God from all that is common, in experience occurs as we have greater and greater vision concerning the contents of the faith. That faith includes the blood sacrifice, the deliverance from judgment, the inheritance, and the new city Jerusalem when it comes out of heaven from God. Faith also includes the possibility of multiplication, a multiplication which only God can accomplish. It makes you a stranger and a pilgrim because this is no longer your home. It makes you into a person who just comfortably abides in the Lord while everybody else is working their butts off to get ahead in this world. You're content to wait on the Lord because you know this is not your home. Hebrews 11.15 And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Remember that Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers, and God is not ashamed to call us his people and be called our God, because we have a longing to be part of what he is building, to the point where we don't even care about this world anymore. Hebrews 11.17 By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Remember, Abraham first had Ishmael, but in God's eyes, Ishmael did not count. Isaac was the seed, and God calls him Abraham's only begotten son. That shows that in the record of Abraham, God does not record his transgression with Hagar and Ishmael. Yes, it's in the Genesis record, but whenever you're talking about Abraham's testimony in the New Testament, the acknowledgement is that he had one son, who is Isaac. And Abraham also walked by faith and left his former land. We know that it took him forever to do it. He dragged his feet. It's not that he was perfect in faith. He was perfected in faith. He grew in faith. However, he was justified the moment he believed in Genesis 15. Hebrews 11:19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. Isaac is a type of Christ. Abraham recognized that Isaac was the embodiment of everything God had promised it, and that through him his seed would be multiplied. He knew that if Isaac were to be sacrificed, God would have to raise him from the dead. So obviously faith includes resurrection. Hebrews 11.20 By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. So this is faith. All of these had the same faith. All these had the same vision of an unseen set of realities revealed to them by God. That's what's being emphasized here, the vision. Faith is a vision. Faith causes you to see something. It's not just blind in the sense that it has no contents. No, we know what we believe. The, se the seed, the blood of the offering, a proper offering, deliverance from judgment, resurrection from the dead, and an inheritance. We look to a city whose builder and maker is God. That's what Moses had. Because of this kind of vision, Moses refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter and chose to suffer affliction with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You may say, well, the pleasures of sin would have been so tempting. But that's not where Moses was focused. Instead, he was looking at what God was doing. God is going to deliver his people, and the promise is finally going to come to pass. We're going to get to see this land that God has promised us. Having a vision of what God is doing spontaneously takes your eyes off the world, which then becomes considerably less tempting or interesting. Hebrews 11.26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect 
unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Faith will make you bold. Someone asked me, how do you make these videos? I've seen the negative comments, and I can imagine the types of hateful emails you must receive. Boy, before I was a believer, I could never have anticipated the kind of insults and accusations which are thrown at me, to say nothing of the slanders and lying videos people are doing about me. In my natural man, I would never choose anything like this, which would bring me into such ill repute, but I've been in ill repute all my Christian life, accused of Christian churches of everything negative that is possible. And yet, I can't let go of the vision. I have to keep pursuing it. I have to keep pursuing Christ. That's how I can kind of relate to and understand the actions of Moses in Egypt. Hebrews 11.28 Through faith he kept the Passover and by sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they were passed through the Red Sea, as on dry land, which the Egyptians, as saying were to do, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say? For time would not fail or time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. To fully explain this would require an Old Testament study as a whole, which I cannot get into right now. But all of the people listed have the same faith and the same vision. That faith enabled them to do positive things, made them strong out of weakness and caused them to escape the edge of the sword, wax valiant in fight, and turn flight to the armies of the aliens. Then the author starts talking about negative things experienced because of their faith in that vision.